Welcome to another Quantum Conversation, brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and I invite you to sit back as we enter the Quantum Realm, that space of the greater part of you. It is your connection to infinite possibilities, infinite potential, and infinite mastery. Oh, and welcome everyone. Thank you for being here in today's Quantum Conversation. We are so excited to welcome back Elizabeth Wood. She is a seer and a scientist. And today we're talking about how to embrace the void and thrive in change. Wow. Elizabeth, thank you so much for being here. Wonderful to see you again. (laughs) Always. It's super great to see you. These times are absolutely making us feel like things are so quickly shifting. And this year that we're in, it's almost over. I can't even believe it. For me, it's been one of the most transformational years. And that can be scary for some. So as we get into this conversation, let's get an energetic update from you. What has this year been like for you? Mm, Thank you for that. Um, I like to kind of keep a pulse Mm -hmm. of of what's happening with humanity, mainly through the one-on-ones I do and getting a sense of consciousness. And so over the past couple of years, that's become more and more clear. And last December, so almost an entire year ago, we, we went through a solstice shift as we always do. And there was a very different wave of consciousness this time and nothing like I'd ever perceived in my short little life. And it, it's what I call the black wave and it was black. And so that was a little freaky. And then I realized, well, you know, our culture in the West, we think of black as bad and that's not really the case. And, and here where I live in Ecuador, we work with a lot of the different native people in the Amazon. And when I inquired about this black wave uh, from especially the Kogi, who, who's an incredible tribe, they said black means the place in which the seed grows. The seed has to start to grow in darkness. And this black wave, it was full of a lot of density, a lot of, different kinds of energies and it was moving really slow and it it was coming down through the chakra system very slowly so right around june you know it opened the heart the masculine power center and i was watching all these men around me going through a lot of different shifts and changes and of course all the feminine and all the masculine programming that we've had to shut our hearts down and wear armor that all had to come off and it felt like layers and layers of skin being peeled away every month as this big dense wave kept moving through our systems and now it's almost to the root chakra and so what i'm noticing about that is that this is all about survival now so we have all this energy around survival and people are having a lot of different events and different sorts of sort of activations, we might call it, where some big breakthrough around survival will happen. And then some new skill or some incredible offering to the world will come up. So every time one of these big coats of energy comes off over this past year, we could call it like a big, huge exfoliation of consciousness, really. There's all this new stuff that comes up. So alongside all of the different events and and different uh, changes and a lot of it being very traumatic, when people get through those moments, especially this year, there's been a lot of phone calls to me saying, I feel like I'm supposed to be doing something new. I don't know what I'm doing but I'm supposed to do something new, I'm supposed to do something different. And if you're, if you're paying attention to that energy and the breakthroughs around all of those changes, especially now as it comes through the root chakra, 
which is the female power center, there's going to be this big burst of energy. And people might call it like a, almost like a Kundalini, perhaps. I don't know exactly what's going to occur. I can make a guess because I've, I've had some experiences over the past several months where I get glimpses of, and I have experiences in my own body of what's coming. Cause that's my job is to be the flashlight on the front of the boat and say, Hey, guess what? This is coming. And with that understanding, there is this moment that is going to be what I call Kali energy, Kali energy. And Kali is time. Kali is not death. Kali is time. And that energy it's it's very hot right so there's going to be this big sort of burst of energy and emotional um release around the solstice but that's not necessarily the most exciting part the it's january that it's going to get really exciting because in January, there's going to be another wave, but this wave is going to happen really fast. It's going to happen within a week. Instead of a year's worth of work being done on your body and your experience because of the nature of the earth and where she's at right now, it's going to be a year's worth of experience in one week. And it's the clear light. So nobody's going to necessarily see it coming because it's the clear light of existence. And this is something that, this is why I said embrace the void because the clear light is the, is the void. And that's going to shatter anything that you are ready to shatter. You ought to sit down really deeply and consider what is your intention? What besides come, being, bringing through all of your soul skills and all of your memory and remembrance, besides healing trauma, what is what else do you want to bring through and what layers of your egoic experience are you ready to shatter and not pick up the pieces but be willing to be raw and brand new and entirely prepared to be something in, different and that is the beginning of becoming a new species so we're here at this brink in time this 12,000 year cycle it's a galactic cycle. And in cosmology and astrophysics, there's something called the galactic current sheet. And this current sheet, it's like a big, huge wave of energy. It's electromagnetic, comes from the black hole at the center of our galaxy. Every 12,000 years, it comes through. It's happening right now. We're right inside of it, right this moment. And that causes the electromagnetic field of the earth to disappear. It's 30% gone already. And over the next 20 years, it's going to disappear entirely. And then we get access to, you know, some people be like, oh, that's dangerous. Well, no, <laughs> it's about thriving and change. And we've done this 66 times as a species. 66 12,000 year cycles. Now we're at the end of an 800,000 year cycle and we're at the end of a 12,000 year cycle. This is now the time for us to work towards becoming something new. And the name that has come through many mystics, including the Kogi are saying Homo Luminous, the human of light. This happens to most of the planets in our galaxy. And this is part of what people call the ascension process. This is what's happened to all the other beings, the other humans on different planets, just like it's happening to us. And the last 800,000 year cycle was the shift from Homo erectus to Homo sapien. And so here we are at this incredible pinnacle, all these different things opening up all at once. And this newness, this, this rawness is happening. And it's daily, it becomes more and more intense and in all of the light. And now there's all these very new measurable types of light, like not just UVA and UVB, but UVC is actually bombarding us. It's being accessed now. And it's not a bad thing. Again, this is, this is all about change and it's supposed to happen. So with that, that's kind of the layout. That's the lay of the land. And, and it's a understanding of what's happened the past year, what's coming, and what's going to happen over the next 20 years. 
So we'll see. I mean, it's always going to be something different than we expect, but there's so many great tools for us so that we can make sure we do this really, really deeply and really, really with conscious intent. So that's what I've been seeing. Wow. Thank you. Because I think all of us watching and listening can really resonate with that, with the change that we've witnessed in our own lives with the messages we've gotten from uh, channels that are out there. You get it from the Kogi tribe as well. Wow, this is really transformational. I wanted to say that the, the feeling of something new being birthed, I mean, I'm not the only one. It's almost like, I don't wanna say that sometimes it felt that we were just going through the motions this year, as we sit and cultivate this newness, as we sit and contemplate this newness and what we're supposed to do with it. At the beginning of this year, I felt that wave. Thank you for describing it that way. It's perfect because for me, and you did mention Kundalini. So for me, it was the very first day of this year, I felt as if the only thing holding on to the past was our memory of it. Like I looked around and said, wow, everything has changed. This is a whole new world. And so with that, we're still going, we still go through the motions, mm -hmm. but yet here we are, you know, 11 months later, and many are feeling such a shift in things that we do, things that we want to do. It's like the old, they're like shoes that don't fit anymore. And something is about to give birth. We are about to give birth to something individually. So navigating this, I also want to share as well that I've heard from many women. It's very interesting, the different scenarios. People have started to feel things in their bodies they've never felt before. Maybe that is Kundalini. So what do we do with that? What is that to be used for creation? Um, we sit with this, like you said, and really put out our intention. I know I'm hearing some saying, what is it that we are here to do? How do we birth this? Mm, that's a good question. So I think that Kundalini is really specific because it goes up the spine. It, it goes up the vagus nerve. And a lot of the new stuff that people are feeling, um, are there's, there's different ways to see this. Someone just mentioned they got shingles. Yeah, because and, uh, your nervous system. <laughs> it, you know, like on the skin, along the spine, little breakout. It's not like a rash, right. or, but maybe it's a little rash. Is that related? Absolutely. And I'm getting reports from people all over the world and saying, hey, I'm getting this weird rash. And like lots of people, yes. men and women, um, sometimes all over the torso, sometimes all over the body. So what this is go what's happening is is twofold. Your nervous system is trying to get used to all this new radiation. And it's like I said there's many many kinds of light that we're getting access to right now. And some of it we don't even have names for. Cuz 12,000 years ago they didn't necessarily spend a bunch of time measuring precise energies and radiations and naming them like we do now. And this, this stuff is actually doing several things. I perceive it as an incredible detox, twofold, a detox of the nervous system, which can cause those rashes. It can also cause shingles to pop up because those particular uh, little intelligent illnesses like to hang out in the nervous system. And so uh, Epstein Barr, uh, shingles, lots of different kinds of things hang out in the nervous system. They're very intelligent and they're trying to tell you something. So you ought to spend some time actually psychically talking to any illness that is showing up because they're trying to help you to remember something. I cured myself in 24 hours of a terrible shingles outbreak because the shingles was trying to show me what I'd asked for, which is where was the source of my worthlessness? And it had come from my getting chicken pox at five years old and having my face all scarred up. And the shingles came to show me that. So it's trying to show you something. 
Anybody who's having any skin stuff show up, notice exactly where it is in your body because the body's a big map. So if it's on your spine, that means you're not feeling supported by the universe. If it's in the groin area, then you're dealing with sexual shame. For me, it was right around my solar plexus and that had to do with me not feeling like I'm powerful. Pay close attention to if it's on the left side of the body that's you feeling supported by the spiritual or not. The right side is being whether or not you're feeling supported by the physical world, right? So then you need to recognize that you have to do deep emotional processing. That's the number one tool that's going to get us through all this because the reason any of this is showing up is your memory, your DNA memory is being cleaned out. And so you have to understand well, what is DNA really all about exactly? I'll be teaching a whole class about this soon, but a, a little glimpse of this, the DNA is, as most of you know, is not a singular thing. It's not, it's a receiver transmitter. It's a memory storage base, like a library that goes back through time, 800,000 years at least, if not more. And furthermore, it's, like a 12 room house but it's got an open floor plan and those rooms are dimensions of consciousness so dna when people say 12 strands of dna you're not going to see that in a microscope the dna is not going to look that different in a microscope what they're talking about what they're alluding to in my opinion is 12 dimensions of consciousness because the whole point of dna was so that we had access to all 12 dimensions all at once, like a big open floor plan, and so that we had a library of memory. Because the beings that created DNA, they were like librarians. And they would dimension hop and gather information, but then they were very long-lived, and when one of them would die, they would lose all that knowledge. But with DNA, you don't lose any knowledge. You have access to the entire collective of knowledge. And, and you have access to all 12 dimensions at once. But when we're born into these bodies, that big, huge 12-room house is full of trash bags already because of genetic trauma. And us brave souls who decided to come at this shift, we came in gung-ho saying, I know that this trauma is going to block me from remembering who I am, but I'm coming in so I can clean up this particular lineage. And the crazier and, and more traumatic your life, the more powerful you are as a soul, because you were brave enough to go in and say, I'm going to go in deep, show me the seventh level of, of hell and send me, send me so that I can clean that up so that I can collapse those polarities. And when we go in and we systematically start doing through ritual, and I'll describe a, a ritual that you can start doing right away, through ritual, which is very, very powerful, don't underestimate ritual. My scientific degrees are all in anthropological studies and ritual is literally like the foundation of deep DNA level work. And that's why even the Kogi still and other tribes all over the world throughout time, throughout all history, humans have been doing rituals and we're good at it because rituals change DNA and rituals clarify DNA so that you get access to the whole house. So you can pick, pick one particular thing in your genetic history that you're aware of that has afflicted your family and yourself. And so perhaps uh, alcoholism, right? Or perhaps um, anger problems or depression, um, anxiety. Pick, pick one thing, just start with that so that you don't feel overwhelmed, but you can really be open to doing this regularly and noticing what comes up and remembering in your own history what has come up for you to address everything you need is in this life you don't need to remember your other lives you need to remember this one and we call this recapitulation in mysticism and so you're going to do some recapitulation but pick one thing first right and then get yourself set up you need to have your altar space 
It's really important to have an outdoor altar space and an indoor altar space so that, you know, you're not going to say, well, it's raining, so I can't do my ritual. Well, that's not an excuse. <laughs> Go into your house, too, and have your space. Make sure you're bringing in the elements, you know, water and plants and a candle and crystals. All of those things need to be there. Open your heart space up especially through the back of your heart space. We often forget the back of our energy field. And welcome all of your ancestors to stand behind you because this healing is for them too. The, the sea of time includes them too. And so when you welcome them, you're going to understand that you're going to be affecting all of your living family members and all of the ones who've gone out of their bodies too and then you're going to pick your energy and perhaps it's anxiety right or overwhelm then you're going to need to sit in it and this is what people don't like about emotional processing that's why we tend to avoid stuff but then you're just packing in more trash bags into your dna house so you got to really sit with it. You got to open the trash bags before you're going to be able to get all the treasure out of this stuff. And you need to be willing to feel anxiety. And what happens is when you're willing to feel it, you're actually standing in that frequency. It will burn. It burns. It doesn't feel good, but it will burn. It tends to burn. It feels uncomfortable. It might move around your body. It might feel like a hot spot in your body and it might move around. And when it does, that's a good sign. The burning is literally, you're burning away trash bags of trauma and not just yours. You're burning away perhaps tens of thousands of anxiety trash bags out of your field. You're gonna let it burn, 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 burn until it feels almost unbearable and then you're nearly done. And then you're nearly done. And then you're going to feel this breakthrough where it feels like a cooling off of your body and it feels more open. And that's when you're going to say your special ritual words and the way that I do it. And you're, you're meant to modify what I'm teaching you play with this. This is just an idea, but I like to say, dear heart, please clear all of the anxiety trauma from my body and field and the bodies and fields of my ancestors now so i use my heart field i talk to my heart mind and i use that in order to do the final clearing and then i take a nice deep breath and then you replace it part of clearing is that we tend not to replace the energy but it's physics it's important that you replace things otherwise it's going to get replaced for you and you don't want that you want to be in control of this you're the soul in charge of your body and so what's the opposite of anxiety we're working with polarities in consciousness all the time half the dimensions of consciousness have duality in them and that's really important so you want to work with polarities so the other side of anxiety is tranquility and or calm right perhaps joy you get to decide and then you're going to welcome that and you're going to ask dear heart fill my whole body and field replace this energy with tranquility and the bodies and fields of all of my ancestors now and then you take a nice deep breath and you let yourself feel and fully hang out in the exact way that you just were allowing yourself to be showered in anxiety you're going to allow yourself to be filled with tranquility and that's the fullness of that ritual and you can choose to tackle as many pieces of this as you like sometimes i'll even go in and say well I'm, i've got 50 things that i'm ready to work with and once you get used to this ritual it's pretty easy to find lots of new stuff lots of old stuff and then you get really excited because your body starts to change you start to feel better your illnesses get better many of the illnesses we have are from genetic trauma all sorts of things i could really go into it but the 
importance of this being that you allow yourself to acclimate. Integration is one of the most important laws of the universe. And so if you're acclimating then to all of this new space in the 12 dimensions of your consciousness, then you're going to feel the change and then you're going to be ready for another cleanup, right? So you're not going to deep clean your house every single day, right? Just like you wouldn't deep clean your actual house every single day. It takes effort. You need to have some time to do it. You need the space to do it, right? And then you get to enjoy your nice clean house for a week or two or however long you end up waiting. And that's okay to take your time right now. I realize that consciousness is seeming to speed up a lot in the changes that are happening. But no matter what, taking the time for this and to take the time to acclimate is very, very important so that you don't overwhelm your body when you're doing this cleanup. But something very special happens when you do this work. You end up being able to remember who you are. And this is absolutely 100% true. Not only myself, my own teacher, and many, many, many of my clients, you get access to more. You get access to more guidance. You get access to more dimensions of consciousness. You get access to more of your soul's memory your energy field gets bigger. You find that all those things that you weren't sure that wanted to come through, now you know what they are. And so if you really want to know, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing right now? What's this new stuff I'm supposed to be bringing through? If you're doing this, you're going to know. You won't need anyone else to reveal that to you. And then you're going to feel more and more and more your true self, that changes your DNA, which then changes the collective. Remember I said DNA is a receiver transmitter. That receiving and transmitting, you're doing that too with your inner changes, this inner work that you're doing. You're doing that too. You're showing humanity what's possible in this work. So this these two processes to be able to emotionally sit in something very difficult and let it burn away and recognize that burning, it, it feels like discomfort and so we don't do it, but it's actually exactly what you need to know that burning is your DNA changing. It's your epigenetic memory shifting. And then secondly, to be able to focus in on the genetic lineage right now, Many of you have been doing work on yourselves for ages, but you end up hitting a wall because it's no longer your trauma anymore that you're looking at. You're looking at your genetic trauma now, your ancestors' trauma. And there's lots, there's lots to sift through. And it can be very nuanced. And if you're not sure what you want to look at, perhaps you're adopted. Don't worry about that. If you know what your general ethnicity is, like I'm Basque and Scottish and Dutch. So I got some Viking trauma in there. I have some Atlantean trauma. That's who the Basque are. I have some Scottish trauma. All that's really juicy stuff. Go get some history books. Watch some documentaries. You'll see lots of things to work on. <laughs> and it can be actually very rewarding because you learn a lot about the nature of trauma and what humans have been through. And like Loren said, a lot of this is about memory, and she's exactly right. You're so right, Loren. It's all about what we're remembering. The last little strings of attachment to what was is simply through the memory, and it's so much deeper than just the mind. You're precisely right. It is the memory. It's genetic memory, and that's what has to change. And the more we burn these trash bags away, the better, and it helps to make this next shift easier so that we all know who we are and why we came and what we're capable of. And many of us have been here for all of these shifts. That's where I tend to show up. I come and I'm a, a cheerleader for humanity every 12,000 years. But this is the nature of where we're at at the moment and why our bodies seem to like have all sorts of weird stuff, especially through the skin coming up. That's, that's showing you what's happening. And if you have a little chat with those little rashes. If you have a little chat with whatever's popping up, 
just open your heart and say, what are you trying to show me? And then listen and wait. It's not going to show up exactly the way you always think, but you're going to get answers and then you can tackle the genetic memory. So that's kind of what I'm seeing about what keeps happening to people's bodies and why our nervous systems and our DNA are literally doing a purge, which is a good thing. Wow. Thank you. That is really helpful. We're getting comments in our Zoom audience of how extremely spot on you are. And it's really interesting. So one more thing on the ancestors before we dive into some questions from our audience is that um, the it, so the issue that we feel ourself, the issue that we feel, whichever issue that it is, to turn and feel into the ancestors. It's almost like as you were speaking, I know we were all kind of doing a little mini process there. And it's interesting to see that it is related to the ancestors. And that does help us see what we took on. I've got a joke. <laughs> I have a joke about genes, G-E-N-E-S, genes. My sister who is here, we didn't know each other growing up because we had different families. And now we're adults and we know each other. And our husbands look at us and they say, oh my gosh, they're so similar. And I, my saying is, yes, those genes make your butt look fat. <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically an unawareness of what we're actually talking about today. When yeah. in the genes, our genes, what's in our genes is actually the programming within us. So the issues that we have are not only just ours, but say there's an issue where we're like, why am I this way? That's because of the ancestors. So these rituals, right? We, we take it on as our own, but it really does help us through it. Very powerful, very effective. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. I can comment right now. I mean, you and I haven't seen each other for a bit and look how different we look. Mm -hmm. Look at how much work both you and I have done. And my body has changed a lot. I look totally different than when we first met. Yeah, you look beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, well, you too. And it's the light. It's you so know, and there's so much that changes because when you do that cleanup all the time and you're in and you're and you make this a lifestyle, right? It's a mystical lifestyle. And you're constantly aware of and you're tracking consciousness and energies and and then being very wise about, you know, what we do with our consciousness. I've, I've learned a lot about that. But when that happens, then your body changes and people make comments. They, they're they aware. They they notice. And even here in person, um, in this little town I'm in, people say, you look totally different. And it's it's every month I always get new comments. You look totally different again. <laughs> um, but that's the nature of this because then no longer am I defined by my genetic history. Yeah. I'm defined by my soul's memory and my, my DNA house becomes really, really, really clean and clear, which creates incredible amounts of power and light is power. Power is light. And this power changes your body it changes your family members every time i do some big shift i i can like clockwork oh my husband's gonna have a shift and so are my kids and then maybe a day later bam my husband will have some sort of blow up breakthrough and so will my kids they'll all be like really angry or they'll have like a thing or they'll they'll burst into tears or whatever. And it's like, I know what to expect. And now they do too. <laughs> Cause I pointed out, I'm like, well, I just had a shift and I'm kind of the gung ho mystic in the family. So I'm the one carving this random path through the mountains because of guidance energetically. This is symbolic of course. And they decided to follow me <laughs> on this path. So then they have breakthroughs too. And then it keeps going and it's not because of me. It's despite me, really. It's because of the light. So when it gets a little brighter and a little brighter, more is revealed. 
And then I remember more. Like clockwork, I'll remember more. And I'll remember, wow, I do, I do know all of these people. And it's been extremely intense this past year. I've been remembering all these beautiful people and they don't remember me at all. And it's so strange. And they, they kind of have a feeling like they know me somehow. But I'm like, oh yeah, we were in this country and this time and we were doing these things and you and you don't remember any of it, obviously. And now I just feel like a crazy person. <laughs> but um, but it's really profound because then it's like, wow. We're here for this. This is amazing. And then I'm remembering, oh, this is part of the job. Because if we can clean up the DNA, then something really big happens. And what happens is very precious. It's a burst of power that moves through space and time and dimensions, soul and fully merges with the DNA that's fully empty of all genetic memory and nice and clean and clear, and you fully take over your whole body 100%, there's a burst of power that occurs. And this is one way to attain what we would call these high states of enlightenment. It's one way. There's been others, but this is the way that we're being asked to do this now. And the reason is, is because we're here to become a new species this time. That's why you came for this one. That's why there's more people during this 12,000 year shift than all 66 12,000 year shifts combined. There's more people now. And lots of people have got through some stuff and they've done some shifting and then they checked out. Because there's all these really, really good checkout points for the people who, who that's what they need to do. And not everybody, some of us have to continue to slog through this and keep doing the work. But the homo luminous event will be, be aligned with the electromagnetic field 100% gone, the sun going through his, her, whatever shifts, the sun going through the solar shifts, including perhaps even a, a micronova, a, the changes of the plants and animals around you, which are already happening. I'm getting reports all over the world. The microbiome changing. Evolution happens in big bursts. It's called punctuated equilibrium. And it doesn't happen slowly over time. It happens in big bursts. And that's why we call these things breakthroughs, because you're having a punctuated equilibrium evolution moment of your own. And those big breakthroughs, they ripple through reality. And so what will happen is all these things are going to align. The people who ha are aware of this work and what it's going to take, we're going to be prepared for all of that energy, a big burst of it happening. And when we do that, it's going to literally change us into a different species. Again, this occurred 800,000 years ago already. So it's actually written in your DNA that what I'm saying is true. And then with that change, it's all going to happen at once. With that change, that's when the fullness of the human DNA, DNA on Earth comes to play. And that's the cool part. This is the mystery, a mystical mystery about DNA that you need to understand. The DNA is 12 light bodies all mashed together. Somebody asked about light bodies and DNA. It's 12 light bodies all mashed together. It's 12, you have 12 bodies. That's the 12 rooms of your open floor plan, right? The DNA on this planet is the original DNA, the very first DNA ever made in this galaxy. That's what's here on this planet. That's why you don't remember the galactic wars because your DNA doesn't remember it. All of our other starseed human families, they're all human. 
Even the gray aliens are human, guys. All of them, they were seeded from other species who seeded them and seeded them and seeded them and seeded them. And they're all related and they all remember the galactic history because it's written in their DNA. It's not written in yours because the very fresh, empty, brand new DNA got put here. But because we did something very specific to that DNA, which is going to be relevant to the, the package I'm offering today, that DNA was blocked up a little bit. It was transformed a bit because if you hang out as a soul in brand new, fresh DNA, you don't have any wisdom. You don't have any knowledge. You don't know how to sing. You don't know what pain is. You don't know how to heal. You don't know how to speak. You had to learn all of those things, right? So when this experiment was created, all these different beings from all over the galaxy offered their wisdom. Not the knowledge, because knowledge is historical memory. Wisdom is different, right? And they put what's called the 90 ancient templates of wisdom into this brand new, fresh, empty DNA so that we wouldn't have to relearn a whole bunch of things, but also so that we wouldn't have what happened at the beginning when the Lyrans created that DNA, that first set of DNA. And they put their soul energy into that DNA. It created so much power through all the dimensions, through the galaxy and beyond, that it literally attracted our adversaries who are attracted to power. And thus begun, began the galactic wars. The galactic wars started because of DNA. And they had to learn so much about those bodies while being attacked. And so subjugation, domination are part of those 90 templates. You need to know what those are so that you can go get by. Well, they didn't want that big burst of power to occur because they didn't want to attract anybody else. So they blocked it with the 90 templates of wisdom. Now there's four newer ones, four new templates that are still quite ancient and they're not in the body they are available to you right now and that's part of a pathway in mysticism so that you can do what we're being asked to do which is erase the 94 templates of wisdom so i'm offering to you today 94 classes so that you can erase them from your own body just like you're going to go through all those trash bags of trauma you need to go through all 94 of these too. These are the these are the foundations keeping you from remembering who you are. And when we accomplish this in consciousness, that's going to create and basically support that event that I'm talking about, that burst of light. This is why we're going to be called homo luminous. Because then you're going to remember exactly who you are. You'll have your soul's wisdom and knowledge. And we're basically saying, we don't want to block that power anymore. We want to attain that original state, 100% of our DNA being nice and clean and clear so that our soul's memory 100% comes online and our bodies will change. I have no idea what we're going to look like at all. No clue. But I know that we didn't do this for nothing. The experiment here on earth is so important because, and, and if you're not sure if how important you are, then please understand why in the world would angels and demons and all sorts of different aliens be so interested in us then, if you weren't so important? Why would the Pleiadians and Syrians want to help us? Why? Why would the Arcturians be involved? Why? because you're that important this is this is basically the zero point of galactic consciousness not just earth consciousness galactic consciousness and since 2017 the matrix the physical matrix around our planet is gone so now since then we have a whole lot more ufos and interesting stuff showing up on the planet 
And then of course the electromagnetic field disappearing affords more and more interest because not all those beings could hang out here before that. But that's how fabulously amazing and dramatic this whole stage really is. And this is what the whole bigger picture is all about. So those 94 templates are key. And I'll get into the, the last four here in a moment, but I wanted to allow you to respond, Lauren, to my interesting little history lesson here. <laughs> Amazing. Absolutely fantastic and very helpful. And it really does show our power. And I want to say once again, it really does show what we've been through this year. And you mentioned the homo luminous and, and more of that burst. And you mentioned in January that clear light coming through. Is that more of an indicator of when that takes place? Not necessarily, because the electromagnetic field is disappearing at an exponential rate. And it it was slowly disappearing and then it started to quickly disappear, begin to quickly disappear around 2002. And now it's just happening faster and faster. And when you readjust the Mayan calendar, it was done wrong. 2012 wasn't the end of that calendar. When you readjust it for because they didn't used to have 365 days a year, they used to have 360 days a year. And when you readjust it for that, the end of the Mayan calendar is 2046, which is exactly when it aligns with the electromagnetic field disappearing. And this is all physics, folks. You can go look all of this up. Um, and so that's actually the end of the calendar. <laughs> Um, and I think it's around that time that this sort of burst, or perhaps a bit earlier, that this burst of change will occur. Um, and the the what what's happening in January is the entrance of the void, and that's why I named the title today. You know, embrace the void. The void is your your next best friend, and. It is the it is the nothing between all things. You know, there's more space in an atom than there is matter, um, and this is very very important because the last four templates, which were made available in 2009, these four templates are a shortcut in consciousness. This is going to give us a, a leg up, and. I, a long time ago, around 2017, I did a, a talk called uh, Wings for Humanity, Formlessness and Timelessness. Those are the first two templates because the earth is becoming more formless. She's actualizing as well. She's conscious too, as all of you know. But when you access formlessness and you're willing to be formless, which is in fact a lot easier for women than it is for men. And so you you guys need to open your hearts more and more and more so that you can be one with the earth. And when you do this, what will occur is that you access timelessness because time is not timelines. Timelines aren't real. Timelines are easy for us to talk about because we have been taught to talk about things in a linear way. That's not really how time works. Time is an ocean and time works with gravity, literally. And so certain inevitabilities have a lot of gravity and certain events have a lot of gravity, just like planets or people have gravity. And so then you access the ocean of time, which leads you to have access to the whole universe, the universe containing all things, the third of the last four templates. And when you feel that, you feel expansive, you feel connected. And it's not through the third dimension, it's through the second dimension, which is Indra's net, the, the real internet, Indra's net, I-N-D-R-A, Indra's net. And Indra's net is that connection to all partic particles of consciousness, right? So all atoms connected to each other and all molecules and all people and all planets and 
all the living beings, little and big and everything in between, right? But then, and this is what's been happening to me lately, so I'm, it's actually all in divine timing that we've talked like this, Lauren, because I, I finally figured out and can feel and have access to the nothingness. The universe also has nothing. And it's the this, this, this space between all of these points of consciousness. And when you access that, there's an incredible amount of peace that occurs. And that's what the void is. The void is symmetry. Everything else is moving. Asymmetry is the nature of this universe. That's why there's Half the dimensions have duality and half of them don't. There's, there's a constant movement between polarities and dualities and realities and dimensions. But it's the space between all that that's perfectly symmetrical, perfectly in balance all the time. It's what connects this universe to all the other space between universes. And it's inside of you. You're not separate from it. And this is the clear light. This is what the ancient teachers talked about. They called it the clear light of existence. There's nothing in it. And that in January, it's coming down for us. It's being made available. And most people are going to feel like it's a free fall. But I have a joke too. What's falling into the void when you do it on purpose well it's just flying <laughs> and that's why i called it wings for humanity formlessness timelessness the universe containing all things the void between all things this is what you're made of you're not separate from anything and when you are putting your attention which is pure power by the way your human attention is pure power when you're putting your attention on this every day, this is what keeps transforming people. And, and yeah, lots of people have been getting sick, including me. I have to admit that this past year, I had a few different instances where I was pretty sure I was going to die. And I didn't because it just pushed me deeper into the clear light. And then I'd feel more clear and more aware of what I'm talking about, these last four templates become more clear for everything in your life. It's very transformative. And like the Tao, the Tao that is named is not the Tao. So I can talk around it, but I can't really name it precisely. I can talk, I can talk about it around it, but not about the thing because the thing can't be named. It's nothing. <laughs> Right. So does that make sense, Lauren? Yes. And I'm glad you explained it that way. So um, just being is how we navigate it. Just being open, being in the heart, centered in the heart and tuning in. And yeah, I guess that would be the question is, what do you do in the void? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. there's no doing there's no doing it's there's definitely no um a, a way of being now of being mm -hmm. and when we get sick and stuff you can ask yourself or when you're having trouble you know i don't wake up in perfect oneness every day that's just, that's not realistic i'm a mom and i yeah. have animals and a life and work and you know i but i constantly ask myself and this is the key. It's actually, it's not easy, but it's simple. I constantly ask myself, what am I afraid of? So I'll give you an example, very real life example. Um, I, I'm kind of addicted to reading articles on my phone. I'm not on social media. So my situation is slightly different. A lot of people get um, connected to their phone through the social media, but I'm addicted to reading and I read a lot. I read, you know, 20, 30 articles every day. And I'm not talking about news. I'm talking about like science articles and stuff. I'm, I'm constantly reading about astrophysics. And, and I realized I spend a lot of time doing this. 
And I've always had this excuse, like, well, I'm trying to keep up on things for people. You know, I, I, I want to give people, um, you know, little nutshells of this stuff so they don't have to go read these articles and things like that. Well, that's not really, that's doing too much, right? I'm doing too much. And, and I'm also, that's a savior complex. I'm going to save you from having to read science articles. <laughs> um, and so instead, um, I realized, wow, I'm afraid of something. I'm, I'm keeping my mind busy. What is my mind afraid of? And I, it dawned on me, I'm actually really afraid of nothing. I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to think about nothing. I'm a, I'm, I'm a fairly bad meditator. <laughs> it's an, very important that you do meditate, but the the meditation piece is really hard for me because I'm a psychic. So I'm constantly accessing information in all 12 dimensions all the time. I, this is why I can't drive. I've never driven a car. I can't. This, this is not going to work. So I realize I'm afraid of nothing. I'm afraid of thinking about and seeing, psychically seeing and feeling nothing. And I, it's because I've equated to nothingness I've equated nothingness to boredom. And I realized, wow, I, I need to shift this. So I constantly ask myself, what am I afraid of? And this, what I just said, just happened last week. So I'm always seeking it out. What am I truly afraid of? What's the next thing that I'm truly afraid of? And this is mysticism. This is mysticism as a skill. You seek out what you're afraid of. A lot of times we get sick because we're afraid of something and then the body finally can't take it anymore and it forces you to feel like you're totally helpless so that you have to face your fear. And this is so powerful as a way of being and no, it's not easy at all, but you should seek it out and find it in your body and be willing to dive off that cliff. That's how you thrive in change. You constantly seek out fear. Constantly seek out fear. That is something that we should all write down on a sticky note or just at least certainly remember. And it really is helpful because I know that I'm not the only one sitting here in hindsight looking at even just last night or this week or last week or this month, this past month and looking at what really takes us off center. Mm -hmm. But that is, um, that's it. So breaking through, once we do that, I think there'd be a hesitancy or fear, there's another fear of losing the status quo. That's a good question. Do you ever fear losing? Like parts of us are like, okay, let's just go for it and go for the new. But what's going to happen to our life? What's going to happen to our household? What's going to happen to our work that we do? I can feel that our, you know, um, our relationships. Yes. This is a very important question mm -hmm. because that's part of it. Yeah. And, and have to be willing to let go of some of those things. And that yeah. is what makes me scared. And that's so awesome. Because now you know what the next thing is. <laughs> but yes, absolutely. Um, no, fear is not chaos energy. Chaos is a thing that people are afraid of. Fear is not chaos. Fear is very specific. Fear is resistance. And so what we're really saying is I'm resisting. I'm resisting hanging out in nothing because I'm resisting boredom. I'm resisting these incredible amounts of energetic interchange because I really don't want my family to have to go through those changes. But my friends, don't take away the fact that your family chose to be around you. Your friends chose to be around you. And as you change, they may choose to leave. And that has happened a lot to me in the past couple of years. Many of my friends just up and leaving out of nowhere, quite suddenly, actually. And 
and recognizing, wow, I can't hang on to anything in this. This is the mystical path. But the, the tricky part too, is that if you continue to move forward in all of this, the people around you will also benefit in the changes that occur but don't take away the fact that they're creator beings and they're choosing every single day every single day i choose my marriage you know we don't just get married or have our kids and then one day you know and that's it you're choosing it every day i'm choosing to be a mom every day and and i'm not a I'm, this is a this is tricky because the the, one of the hardest attachments for me to give up was my children. Now I'm still a mom and I'm still a pet owner and I'm still a householder and I'm a very hard worker, but I gave up all of those things in that now I love them unconditionally. Now I'm not attached to them. Attachment is running your unconditional love through a little hose and, and saying, well, right now I'm going to love you because I like what you're doing. And so you're spraying all your love at your kid and then they do something really dumb. And then you're like, I'm not loving you right now. I'm really mad at this moment. That's attachment. And so when you throw the attachment away, you're saying, no, nope, I'm going to love you constantly all the time. I'm going to pour this love all over you all, all the time, all day long. And I'm going to make sure that all this love is still happening, even though you do stupid things. And that is really hard to do. <laughs> but literally, it's like a hose attachment. And you're deciding because of your desires and your preferences, how you're going to love your clients, how you're going to love your daily life how you're gonna love your situation or the crazy little dog barking in the background at the moment how you're gonna just love and be in all of that that's really key here and we're afraid of we're, we resist taking that attachment off of our little hose of love because of control and the fact is is that as a creator being you are creating reality it's less about control and more about creation. Creation is very different than control, folks. You don't have any control. You have creation. That's more precious. That's more powerful. That's more present. And that's how you get out of all of your expectations. Be present. Create. Stop controlling everything. And the other piece is, you know, resistance is going to show up in your body. And when you resist something all the time, you get sick. Your body's literally resisting a frequency or a thing or, or a, most, of, most illness has emotional components to it. 99% of the time. And that's really important to recognize. So when you're allowing your emotional self to actually express itself without resistance, you start to recognize, wow, I was so tense here. And no wonder I've been feeling these migraines. No wonder I've been miserable and breaking out in rashes. I'm finally not going to resist all this stuff. And I'm going to allow myself to surrender fully through being present, through being a creator that's not trying to control everything and trying to be attached to anything. And by being willing to stop judging. <laughs> especially yourself, you know, judgment is very specific. Judgment is when you run your discernment, which is your ability to know what is true through your trauma. That's judgment. When you run your discernment through your trauma, you're judging and you're judging yourself most harshly most of the time, right? So that's kind of what I'm seeing right now as you pointed that out, Lauren, this is super important stuff. Thank you. Again, we need to write those notes down as really good reminders. Okay. All right. So even in my own life, I've been resistant. Wow. I feel like crying in a way. 
You're so powerful. I love how vulnerable and true you are to yourself. And, you know, you've made so many changes in your life that are really dramatic. Very dramatic. Like I say, this has been the most transformational year of my life. Yeah. But what you're really helping me do and helping others who are listening do is to stay true, to stay true to our heart. No matter if it hurts other people, and it and, will. And, and so I'm judging that it's going to hurt some other people. You know, there was at one phase I said, I, I took almost like a bodhisattva vow. My heart will be the only heart that hurts. I will hurt for other people. So no other people have to hurt. And I realized that's a bunch of bunk. And it's not my role. That's not my role. My role is being solid and centered to my heart. Yeah. And um, having to say things when it shifts and changes all around us to be able to be so bold to truly honor that heart, that center of the heart. You know, here I, I stood underneath a waterfall and the sun was bling, blazing down and I see this rainbow all around me. And I realize we are the center of the rainbow. Yeah. And so that is a message right here right now and so my little rash that i have on my back on my spine it's it's clearing up as i've been doing this process but um i realize that it's the resistance of not wanting to take that step and to speak truth so yeah. thank you. this has been very very helpful it's it's truly not easy it's not I show you something too lauren the, the highest dimensions of consciousness, we say high, but it's really wider. The widest dimensions of consciousness, you don't go forward into them. You fall backwards. Yes, thank you. I get that. That's where you're at because you're in the ninth dimension, right? You're beaming all this love. The ninth dimension is where you feel the presence of love, right? But the people in the 3D and even 4D in my life, mm -hmm. it's almost like you got to weed whack it. You got to weed whack cords or energetics. Constantly. Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely. Something that's resisting hurt, hurt, and the change that comes from that. Feel that presence of love and recognize that it's you. Uh, and that you're the one loving yourself. This this happened to me last year, and I, I, it was so powerful because I felt loved, and it hurt, and it and I and I thought, you know, I'm so dense, I'm I've got so much ego, and I'm I'm not able to love fully. I'm afraid of loving. I'm afraid of being happy because it might go away. And all of it was burning away and I'm sitting and I'm seeing this energy of source God loving me. And then it dawned on me, oh my God, that's me. And that's when you turn around and you have to fall backwards into being that, which is loving all things and saying, I see you and what you need and what you want. And I see your trauma and I recognize you. And I am, and I am loving you exactly the way you are. I'm loving this situation. I'm doing this soul to soul thing. I'm not doing trauma ping pong. Not going to do trauma ping pong today. That's the cords and the, all that. That's the weed whacking you got to do every day. Not playing this trauma ping pong with you today. We're doing a soul to soul talk here because I'm not separate from you. But, but the other side of this too is, is what what I call the savior complex really in myself, especially. And that's, that is not okay. Cause I'm taking, I'm trying to take away people's experiences of, of pain. We're trying to keep them from their own. Mm -hmm. Yes. Their own. Yes. And pain is power. And that's another thing I've learned. I have a very rare disease. So I'm in a lot of pain all the time. And it's, uh, it's called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And I have multiple types all at once. So it's pretty wacky, but I'm at like a level seven of pain every day. And I realized Loren emotionally, mentally, physically, all these kinds of pain 
they're all light. It's all power. And if you really notice it, pain is radiant. When you're hurting and somebody's hurting, it radiates and you can feel it. And you're such a powerful empath, Laura, and you're feeling, I can see clearly that that's why you're resisting others' pain is because it actually, you feel it and you're, it hurts you too, right? But it's radiant. It's a type of light. And that, if you allow it, if you allow it to move through our bodies, right? So the people around you who, who you know are going to hurt because of these truths, because of what has to happen in your stillness, then you're going to feel what they go through and allowing it to move through and burn even more away. Let it act as a wildfire and it'll move through you too. And it, then your changes are a double whammy for your evolution. Because not only are you going to feel the changes that have to happen around you and the other people around you, but you're going to feel, you're going to feel the, the wave hit the edge and then come back. And as that happens, it's going to burn even more away. And that's, that's intense because a lot of times we don't realize, and I think that's what the clear wave in January is. That's all the shift hitting the edge of the universe and coming back and no one's ready for it, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you so much for this. And I shared because, yes, I can feel that, that, that this journey is other people's journey as well. I mean, we're feeling it. We're all feeling it. And so hold on to our hats as we're really gentle with ourselves, but so incredibly true to ourselves. You know, I've called this, oftentimes I've called this <clears throat> this year at war, a war between my head and my heart. My heart totally knows we've been doing the work. Everyone, we've been doing the work. We are centered in the heart, we know, but the ego and the head comes in and just bashes it all. And so it's the, it's making that journey fully into the heart. And so this conversation has been extremely helpful on so many dimensions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My uh, pleasure, my dear friend. Uh, you've been seeing some of the questions coming in. There's I have, yeah. too many to answer, but um, I think you were literally speaking to them um, yeah. as we were going along. So I hope that that has been helpful for everyone. And I just want to take a moment and invite everyone to join Elizabeth in an upcoming course. If you have not been in a course with Elizabeth, it is this conversation on steroids. And if you've been in a course with Elizabeth, then you know exactly what you're in for. And I know you're excited for it just as we are. So are you able to share a little bit about that class coming up? I know you spoke to it, but let's yeah. take another moment. I've put the uh, link in the chat box. So scroll up in the chat box on Zoom and check that out. And also wherever you're watching and listening to this presentation, it's in the description box. So tell us more about what this will be like. So as I've been remembering more, you know, part of this shift is all about letting go of our old status quo that we remembered and loved so much. And, you know, we've trained even, we've educated ourselves. Oh my gosh, 10 10 years of university for myself and 12 years of mysticism training. And I've got to let it all go, right? And that's what's, that's what's required of us. But as I'm remembering more, what, the reason why I wanted to teach this class is because I understand more about what the, the past really affords us. Now, it's very interesting because there's many, many people who talk about the history of the earth and the, and the history of DNA and just understand that no matter what story you hear about a single event, you're going to have a million different stories that may be very, very different from one another. Um, but the, I'm, I, I'm only getting my opportunity to just share from my perspective and from my learning from ancient text and native peoples. So I'm combining native tradition with my study of ancient text, all that text reading, 
and then my soul's memory and this is fairly new and fresh when it comes to laying all of this out what is the real history of this planet and i know more now than i've ever known and my soul knows elizabeth really doesn't know anything that's the truth but the the soul knows and your soul just like mine comes from the beginning of time and this is such a special thing to to look at but i want to show you what the cycles are in this galaxy what the universal cycles are i want to share with you mysticism science ancient knowledge traditional native knowledge indigenous knowledge and i want to give you the framework so that you can feel empowered my job is to empower you that's my cheerleader role ultimately i'm i'm just a big fat flashlight psychic and i'm also a cheerleader and so i'm here to empower you i'm here to fill your life with light so that you can discern the truth of where you're at and what you should be doing or not doing in nothing right but i want to give you that chance to keep riding these waves i want you to be able to be a surfer in consciousness and not not to let this continue to crush you like it has for all of us over the past year but the next years to come to feel fully empowered and to have exactly what you need we need to understand the past we un need to understand the future and we need to understand the present so that we can get this job done of transforming ourselves from the inside out and that's what i want to lay out in this class the past the present and the future and we're going to get really great detail and the way that i teach is 12 dimensional so i'm a very um clear speaker but I'm not just speaking to you from my 3D body. I'm speaking to you with 12 light bodies. And so there's 12 different things that you're receiving in a class like this. And I wanted to give something really exclusive to Quantum Conversations, which is this course. So it's not going to be on my website. It's not going to be anywhere else. It's just here. And this is important because I find that as i've evolved lauren people start falling asleep when they come to my classes or they'll get a headache and it's because you're being worked on in 12 different ways and i want you to be able to take that full opportunity to lay back go into a meditative state don't worry about what i'm saying let it work on you so this is going to be a class that's going to do many things for you it's going to help you open up your 12 dimensions of yourself it's going to help you to empower you and when you listen to it again later you'll get something new every time you listen to it you'll get a little more history a little more of whatever you needed it's a nourishment it's a font of power this information and it's based in great truth that's beyond all of us but i'm also hoping that it'll help you remember more about who you are that it'll ignite your own soul's memory because you witness these and we're part of all this too you have had skin in the game the whole time you didn't get invited to be a human for nothing most beings don't get invited to be a human you did so I want to make sure you know what that's all about, just at least from that perspective. And you're going to find that your own perspective comes into play too. So it's going to be many, many things happening at once. It's much more than just a history lesson. Okay, thank you for that. And talk about being in the void. We have some questions on the time. We have just gone through a time zone change or the US has just gone through a time zone change. So there's questions around that. Uh, this begins at 11 a.m. Eastern time, right? Yes. So let's not say Eastern Standard or Eastern Daylight Time. It's Eastern time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that means 8 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Mountain, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern time. And then GMT, see, there goes another time shift. I think that'll be 
11, 12, 1, 2, 3, will it be 3 p.m. East uh, GMT or is it, will it be five hours ahead? I think it you may be. You probably know better than me. <laughs> it says 4 p.m. GMT time. The thetimezoneconverter.com for any of our international audience. The thetimezoneconverter.com. Visit that site and you'll be able to find your time zone based off 11 a.m. Eastern time. Okay, great. So thank you for that. And then also another beautiful thing is this course is, you know, for the time that you're going to spend with Elizabeth and for the experience, it's $33. That's a very magical opportunity. And she's also offering this course with the 94 templates, wisdom templates, templates of wisdom. So did you want to mention anything more about those? We didn't yes. Miss but that's literally i'm not joking 94 classes mm -hmm. and they're all about 20 to 30 minutes long and i actually taught them a long time ago like 10 years ago but and so i sound different and you can tell i have a lot more ego sorry <laughs> no. uh but <laughs> but the, the it's interesting because i taught them with the intent that people recognize them in themselves at that time and over these this decade so much has changed that it became very apparent to me that i didn't teach them so people could just recognize them i taught them so that you can be done with them and that's so cool to me because it completely was the opposite of what i thought when i was teaching them but that's the opportunity so when you do those 94 each one you know play with it maybe let one pop up for you one each day or go through alphabetic order whatever you need and when you go through them, feel them, feel them in your body. I describe them quite a bit um, in the classes, of course. I describe history. It's similar. It's similar to how I generally teach. And, and it's a little bit of a history lesson, a little bit of what you can do with it, a little bit of feeling it in your body. Notice them, allow them, and then be willing to do that genetic clearing ritual with each of them and replace them with the universal self. So that was that would be how I would approach these 94 templates this time is in replace them with your soul's memory. And I think that you'll have some really powerful breakthroughs and if you listen to one a day that's 94 days of deep work. And if you spread that out um, and you did like once a week, you'd have a whole year's worth of amazing work that you can be doing. So hopefully you like uh, listening to me talk because 94 classes is a lot. And uh, our our class uh, for our $33 class this time, you, likely it'll probably go the way that I'm used to it going and making sure I answer your questions, probably between two and a half and three hours. Yes. Yes, and it's just a beautiful experience because I'm planning on being there and and enjoying that. It's a beautiful experience because we're going to be squeaky clean after that and very empowered. Thank you, Elizabeth, really for this. And this is something for the time, these changes that we're going through right now, but the changes in 2023, I mean, uh, even the astrology of what's coming with Pluto moving into Aquarius on March 23rd, 2023 is another indicator, but you've got something even outside of that. In addition to that, it's more great transformation. And these are the tools that seriously, consistently help us through it all. I love the ritual. We had some comments in our chat line about the power of rituals. Yeah. And um, I know that we're all we were all mentally doing that, feeling into it as you were speaking it. And now we're putting it into place. So wonderful and so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I want to say again that this replay, because we're all going to want to listen to it. This replay will be right on the Web page that got you here. It will appear on the Web page. It'll also appear on the offer page that's in the Zoom box. And it will also appear on YouTube. So any of those channels will get you to it. Elizabeth, wow. 
I always just want to cuddle up with you on the telephone <laughs> five more hours. <laughs> I love speaking with you. I've missed you and I love you. I'm I'm so amazed at the transformations that you've been through. And I'm so proud. I'm proud for all the great work that we've been doing on ourselves and our lives and and for everybody and good work, everyone. You know, everybody on this call and everyone who will be listening to this, you're here because you're you've been doing the work for eons. It's not just this lifetime. And so don't stop. This is precious, precious work for all of consciousness. So thank you, Lauren, for this. This was really divine timing. Perfect divine timing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Elizabeth Wood. And thank you everyone for watching and joining us because each and every one of you are a new earth leader and we've got this, we can do it. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. Blessings and namaste. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this quantum conversation. And thank you for dancing with us to the cosmic heart. As we raise our own vibration, we raise the vibration of the planet. This show is dedicated to you and all awakening hearts as we are here to shine our bright light and amplify our love. Access all quantum conversations, special offers from our guests, and online healing retreats by visiting AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and from my sacred heart to yours, I honor your magnificent love and light. We leave you now with music from the universe. Music literally created by the universe as musical notes were assigned to mathematical equations. The result is this beautiful music available at AcousticHealth.com. Namaste.